So over the last couple of weeks here at Bike World, we've been doing some of this, a bit of this, and quite a lot of that. But first... Welcome to Pit Lane, the section of the show where we deal with all things mechanical to do with your bike. Now currently, as you've probably noticed, we are working on our project track bike. The idea being we've got a road bike, Kawasaki ZX6R 2008, and we're trying to turn it into a track tool, but on a reasonable budget. And so far, we've had some pretty cool parts fitted to it. And Susie even took the bike for a bit of a shakedown at Silverstone the other week when she attended Maria Costello's all-female track day, which, if you haven't had a chance to see, you can check out on demand on our website right now. But today, we've come up to the Peak District, where the guys at Speedycom have been working on the bike. First up, Ian, the owner of Speedycom, Tell us a little bit about the company. Well, Speedicom was founded in 2004, more of a passion of motorcycles, and it developed into what we have today. During that period of time of the development, we've got only been road racing, we've been involved with BSB teams, and our products are used at the highest level from, uh, well, up to World Superbike, and we're anticipating winning some, some of the world championships with the products that we actually, at this time, supply. And from there, we also resupply all the trade throughout the UK, and to be fair, the main people that we need to consider are the track day people. You know, the track day people are the core people now are using bikes on track that are performance machines and want the best out of it. At the end of the day, a track day is an expensive um, investment for the day and you want to get the maximum from that day. And by going in a prepared manner with the machine done in the correct way, fuel correctly, right suspension settings, the right feel of the bike with the equipment that you uh, fit to the machine, you're ready to actually invest that money in the correct manner. Now you've got me excited now obviously because this is my track bike we're going to be working on today. It started off as a two and a half thousand pound road mm -hmm. ZX6R 2008. We've had some bits fitted to it, quick shifter, things like that. What have you guys been doing it today? Because you've been working on it already and uh, I'm quite excited to see the results. So we've been fitting basically what I call a handling package as we discussed. Being comfortable on the bike takes away certain considerations when you're riding the bike. Yeah. Yeah, if you're comfortable on the machine, you tend to ride it a lot better. So we started today with the Paso levers. The Paso levers are actually produced in Canada. All parts are sourced in the, in the USA, and it's a product that we've used from club level, road lads, right up to World Superbike. Yeah? That gives you six-way adjustment, especially for on the clutch for people who with the smaller hands on the standard clutches that aren't adjustable which gives you that comfort level and also on the brake when you're actually riding the bike and the cylinder overheats you can actually on the move change the position of the brake lever adjustment so you can actually bring the bike brake back firmer and feel with that secure feel and it is really handy as you say to be able to adjust on the fly if i jump mm -hmm. off the bike and susie gets on it and you know they do look pretty trick as well and they're color coded which i kind of like but it's not just the Pazo levers we fitted, is it? No, no. We are, within the Pazo range, we've actually got preload adjusters. As you've been to K's and had your suspension set up to suit your weight and the distribution and the requirements of what you're going to do Obviously, with the bike. Obviously, slimline weight, clearly. Oh, yeah. Of course, mm. of course. Um, that will actually give you, with again, saving time and saving effort within what you're doing within your track day, the preload adjusters will allow you to change your, re your preload within a very quick time period just for it to simply come in, try it, out you go again. Well, so that's the Pazzo stuff. Mm -hmm. We've also got some Bonamici parts in there, haven't we? Yeah, the Bonamici rear sets. Um, we've actually been doing those now for about five years. Yeah. The Bonamici's are actually made in Italy by two brothers, Enrico and Ricardo. And the rear sets themselves, all components can be bought separately if you damage them on a track day, or you can just simply allow to buy half a kit. If you break a toe peg or you break a heel plate, all those bits, like I say, are available have bearings in them and they're cnc'd and they really are a tough piece of engineering so pazo levers preload adjusters we've got bottom each rear sets mm -hmm. what else did we fit right okay one of the key things with riding a bike on a track is control yeah uh, and we've we've mentioned before about the suspension yeah, yeah? now we've also fitted tech spec gripster 
Yeah, yeah. It is a new product we've actually put onto your machine. It is the complete wraparound system. The yeah. wraparound system actually allows you to hang off the bike and still have a level of friction of product to hold you in place. Now, you did something today which no one in a workshop has ever done, and that is actually get me involved with something, um, and that was in reupholstering the seat. Yes, it, the, the reason behind that is not just the aesthetics of, a, of an extremely well designed seat. It does look really cool, yeah. it's got to be said. <laughs> it, this particular seat has a carbon finish on it, and one of the things we, we do get with, with maybe some slightly older seats on, on a road bike, they're quite slippy. So this, effectively, when we've covered the seat, has given you more grip on the track. Yeah. So not to look better, you've got the performance advantages of you're not sliding forward and you won't be appreciating it. So Ian, listen, thank you for having us to your workshop mm -hmm. today. It's an amazing place and yourself and your glamorous assistant Roger have worked very, very hard. Obviously not as hard as I did, um, especially while upholstering that seat. That was really, really tough. That stapler gun was fun. And you do make awesome coffee. So we've decided if it's cool with you, we'd like to come back in a couple of weeks and look at upgrading the performance of the bike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. We, we've got a number of items which we can upgrade the bike with. Um, that'll be the MWR air filter, the Exxon exhaust, a servo body, and then we'll look in the future for fueling your machine. So it's probably one of the coolest things we've ever got to do here at Bike World. We got to spend a whole day with Tom Sykes at Silverstone. So the idea being, you know if you go to a fairground you get one of those really big clunky simulators that kind of replicates the experience of going on a roller coaster. Well Kawasaki wanted to do the same thing, but with the experience of riding a lap around Silverstone with Tom Sykes. <music> to do this we needed to get some really close up riding footage of Tom hooning it around the legendary Northampton circuit. Then with the help of the guys from You Start and Focused Events Track Days, we would actually be able to put you in the rider's seat and you'd get to recreate the feeling of actually racing Tom when you visit Motorcycle Live. The first problem being, we needed to find a rider who could ride the camera bike fast enough that he wouldn't hold Tom up and also quick enough to actually simulate racing. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let me do it. I don't know why. But luckily, we managed to rope in someone called Niall McKenzie, three times BSB champion and Moto Grand Prix legend. The idea was simple. We needed the guys to head out on track and ride in a fast but relaxed way so that we could get what's called our tracking shots. The only issue was, well, as always it is with racers, is you tell them to go out on track and not misbehave, and they're guaranteed to go and misbehave. literally only had an hour during the lunch break of the Focus Events track day to get all of this done. So our director had to have a word with the boys, it's nice to know I'm not the only one that gets told off, before they went out for their second session. So while we were waiting around for our director to adjust the cameras to get the next shots on the bike, I decided to try and grab Tom for a quick chat. So Tom, less than 48 hours ago you were doing the double in Magna Corps and the worst thing is you made it look well, rather easy, let's be honest. Well yeah, you know, it's uh, certainly that's, that's not the feeling um, I got. You know, I, had to, I was still working okay, I had a, um, uh, a good margin, ZX10 I was working well and sometimes in those conditions when you have a, a good good feeling and good setting, you need to keep, uh, let's say, take the advantage from it. And I think um, it's fair to say we did that. So, um, you know, it's important part of the season and, and we need it to um, react. And it has been an incredible season for you. Eight pole positions, nine race wins. I mean, what's it going to be like going into the last round, two races with a 39 point lead, especially compared to obviously the heartache of last year? You know, last year we were chasing the, the, um, the championship and it's, uh, you know, it's a lot harder that way. I feel so. Um, no, I'm, I'm in a nice, um, nice position. I'm, I'm relatively happy with our season. We had a slow start, and, and we've had a, uh, a couple of technical problems. So, um, you know, it would have been nice to have it wrapped up, but um, it is what it is. I'm very um, happy with with the circumstances. Let's say, considering many things, and um, all we've got to do now is go into the last race and. 
yeah, just um, try and stay focused and, you know, um, do what we normally do. Now, and the beer that you're growing, I understand there's a little bit of a story behind that, isn't it? Yeah, basically, we, we had a bit, I've grown it a few times this year just for a bit of, you know, change. There's no, no real story to it, but um, I grew it at the beginning of the season and, uh, you know, it was quite funny. I had um, double win at, I think, where was it? Double win at Donington, double win at uh, Imola. Then I shaved it. We had a bit of a dry spell. Uh, but the biggest fact was... Um, some of my team but mainly my wife she dared me now you know when you're a kid I'm, I'm quite a proud character and uh, if somebody dares me then you know I've got to go through with it so she dared me to um, to go it till the end of the season and, and that's what I'm going to do. It's kind of weird when you see a racer away from the high pressures of what he does as a day job and in fact it's a real pleasure to hang out with Tom because he was a right laugh he's almost like a little kid he's going around making jokes the whole time. But listen we've had you doing something a little bit different today from the day job obviously recreating experience well giving someone the chance at Motorcycle Life to feel what it's like kind of racing alongside you should we say. Yeah I mean it's uh, completely different you know I've been out there on, uh, on, the, on the track with you know with the a bike that I know very well, you know, a great bike, the, the Kawasaki Ninja ZX-10R, and you know, it's been fun. I've done some some laps on on this uh, on this bike, and let's say, uh, yeah, just enjoy myself. No pressure out on a racetrack, um, riding away, and we'll see. You know, somebody's got the chance to uh, to beat me. You know, at, at the end of the, of the day, if they beat me, then I'll be bitterly disappointed and upset. So. Uh, you know, hopefully they uh, don't go too hard on me. So once the boys had actually done the tracking shots, it was time to send Tom out solo with our face cam on. Now, this is one of the coolest shots I think you'll ever see around Silverstone, and we'll be telling you how you could get the same shot later on in the show. One of the really cool things of the day is that we actually got to see for the first time our very own podium board. Look out for more of those in the future. So if you want to see what all our hard efforts were about, then don't forget you can come and meet Tom and check out the digital racing simulator with him and Niall at Motorcycle Live at the Kawasaki Racing Stand. Oh, I'm definitely not going to make it as an actor. <laughs> Welcome to Geared Up, the section of the show where we check out the latest biking gear, gadgets and innovations from the shelves of JNS Accessories. This week we thought we'd address possibly the most popular question we get asked. And no, it's not when am I going to get a haircut, but what's the best way to film my ride? And funnily enough, we think we've got quite a lot of experience in this area. Don't believe me? Check this out. Now, as you can see, we do a huge amount of onboard filming and we literally need to use the best of the best cameras to get the shots that we need. So let's start off with the daddy, the market leader and the ones that we use the most. And to be honest, a camera that's become a household name since it's launched back in 2005, the GoPro. The company was originally set up by an extreme sportsman who wanted a cheap, reliable and practical way to film himself while he was surfing. It was in 2010 and with the advent of high definition that GoPro brought out this, the HD Hero, the camera that we have grown to know and love. Shortly afterwards, they brought out this, the HD Hero 2. Not only did this boast a whopping 11 megapixel camera sensor, but it was also the first onboard camera to let you film in 120 frames per second. 
And then just under a year ago, they brought out the GoPro HD Hero 3, and this really took things on. Not only was it smaller and lighter than the previous models, but it boasted a 12 megapixel camera sensor and the ability to film at up to 4K definition. And there are three versions of this camera with quite different stats. First up, there's the top of the range daddy, the Black Edition. This is a 12 megapixel camera sensor and a rather handy Wi-Fi remote. Next up is a Silver Edition, which shares a lot of the Black Edition's features, but has an 11 megapixel camera sensor. And then there is also the budget white edition, which is very similar to the original HD Hero with a 5 megapixel camera sensor and a lot cheaper. So what does all this megapixel malarkey mean? Well, to be honest with you, if you just want to film your commute to work or show off doing some stunts to your friends on Facebook or YouTube, go for the white edition. 5 megapixels will be more than enough than you'll ever need. But obviously, if you want to film a full HD TV show, which this is, you need the black edition because you need the 12 megapixel camera sensor and all the bells and whistles. Now, the great thing about the GoPro HD Hero 3 is that they incorporated Wi-Fi functionality for the first time. Well, what's so good about that, you're probably thinking. Can I get the internet on them? No, but it means you can use an app on your smartphone or tablet, not only to control the cameras, but is used as a viewfinder as well. Now, GoPro have actually taken things on further with the HD Hero 3 Plus, which has just come out. This not only has a higher video resolution, it's 20% lighter, can shoot for up to three times longer, has four times faster Wi-Fi, plus it's got something called Super View, which expands the already impressive field of view. Now, price-wise, GoPros are known to be expensive. The HD Hero 3 Plus Black Edition is £360. If you want the Silver Edition, you're looking at £280. And for the budget entry-level White Edition, it's still a whopping £200. Now, one of the main reasons we use the GoPro range is their reliability. These things can take a real pounding and still keep on filming, as we found out last year in Germany. Now, another great thing about the GoPros is there is a full range of mountings and accessories to allow you to get that brilliant, unique shot. In fact, there's a whole market that has sprung up, but we'll come on to that in just a bit. But it's not just GoPros we use, no. In fact, a British company came along in 2009 with this, the X170. And not only have we become big fans of the company, which is Drift Innovation, but we've also had a little bit of feedback on how the cameras are made. For instance, with the X170, we were one of the first TV production companies to use this and give some feedback. And while we found it gave great picture quality, unfortunately its length and the fact it had a mounting bracket in the middle meant that it oscillated quite a lot vertically, which could ruin a lot of shots. And the great thing is, they listened, because when they brought out the second camera, the HD Drift here, you can see it's a lot shorter than the original one, a lot more compact, and that removed the oscillation problem. Then finally, last year, they brought out this, the brand new Drift HD Ghost, a top-of-the-range camera offering full 1080p HD film quality. Now, there's loads of things that we love about the Drift cameras, especially the Ghost HD here. And well, one of them is the fact that it's got a 300-degree rotatable lens on the front, which allows you to get so many different action shots when you're trying to mount a camera in a certain position on a bike. But it's also got a 2-inch screen, which allows you to line up your shot. And unlike on the GoPro, which costs an extra £80 to have one of these fitted to the back, it comes as standard. These puppies are also Wi-Fi compatible, but the great thing is it's already built in. You don't need to buy any extra kits. You can control them on an app via your smartphone or tablet. Plus, it has a two-way remote control, which can fit to a little wristband and stick on your wrist while you're riding your bike if the camera's out of reach, or you can literally have on your fuel tank so it's right in front of you and you can see it and use it easily. Now, the great thing about this camera, as we mentioned, is the fact that the Wi-Fi and the LCD viewing screen and everything is as standard, and it'll only set you back £250. Now, to get the same spec GoPro, you'd have to spend well over £500. Now, if you spent £250 on a flimsy digital camera, you're obviously going to want to look after it. And the great thing about both of these models is that they come with very sturdy protective cases. And, well, we know how sturdy they are because, well, we put them through this. Who's a silly boy then? So now you've got your camera, how do you go about mounting it onto your bike or onto your person to get that awesome shot? Well, there's a veritable smorgasbord of mounting uh, accessories and arrays that you can use, and here's just a few of them. First up, the suction cup mount. Now, you may be a little bit worried about attaching your camera to your bike with one of these, but trust me, these are brilliant and very, very useful for us as we need to get cameras on and off the bike rather quickly while on a shoot. If you want to stick your camera to your bike permanently, they all come as standard with some really good sticky adhesive pads. Plus, there are loads of options if you just want to wear the camera on yourself, varying from a helmet strap to a chest harness, which you use quite a lot. It's not just the official GoPro and drift mounts that you can use as well. There are loads of companies springing up that will offer you alternatives. Something we're a really big fan of is these, the RAM mount, which we like because they give you great flexibility on the position of the camera, but also really sturdy and reliable. 
Companies are constantly innovating and trying to come up with new ways as well to allow you to mount your camera in unique positions. Like this, for instance, the Wizmount CU2 pack, which we think is blooming awesome, and we're going to be trying out loads over the next few weeks on the show. But you don't have to go and spend hundreds of pounds on a complete mounting system. In fact, we've found to get some of the best and most unique shots, you can make your own. And one of the biggest questions we always get asked is, how do we get that shot that looks back at the rider's face? <laughs> So here's one we made earlier. Now this is how we managed to get that awesome face cam shot. It's very simple. It's a standard GoPro sticky mount at the bottom, a carbon pole with a GoPro adapter at the top. Simples. Now believe it or not, with all this really high tech and expensive equipment, the most important piece of kit when you're doing onboard filming is this, gaffer tape. Not only is it always important to have a backup in case a suction mount or a clamp goes wrong, but if you're going to a track day, the rules have got a lot stricter and they'll insist that things are taped down as well as being attached to the bike. So there you have it, a guide to the two types of onboard cameras that we use here at Bike World. Now, I'll be doing a full write-up on our brand new website, bikeworld.co.uk, if you check in the presenter's blog section. And if you want to let us know what you think we should be covering in Geared Up Next, plus post up some of your favourite videos and maybe some innovative mounting shots that you've come up with in our forum section under Geared Up. Maybe you can even beat our face cam shot. So that's all we've got time for on this week's show, but don't fret, if you're wondering where Susie is, she's been out and about investigating an all-female track day organised by Maria Costello, and you can check out her video diary exclusively on our brand new website, bikeworld.co.uk. And if you haven't checked out this website, you need to go there now. Not only has it got some behind-the-scenes blogs and loads more footage from the actual show, it's got forums and you can see past episodes in full on demand. Mm -hmm.